Dodge pickup with 750 cash back for as low as 86.28. See your nearby Dodge dealer today. Because a man needs a place to put his stuff. Come home to the best. The Olympic Games on Channel 4. Folks, it's day five of Elvis Repeat Weekend. I like to think that uh, it made all of our lives just a little bit better. Like I said in one of my biggest hits days, imagine all the people living life in peace. <laughs> Is that hairpiece too tight? Uh, a no. little bit. Yeah. yeah. From New York, where we're just waiting to see what the Today Show does next so we can make fun of them. Uh, these ideas don't come easy. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, radio personality Howard Stern. Elvis's former cook, Mary Jenkins. Musical group, The Bodine. And a visit from Marlon Brando. Plus, Paul Schieffer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, a man whose nightly editorials are not to be considered the opinion of this network. Let them come up with their own. Dave. to the show, ladies and gentlemen, I have one question for you right here at the beginning of tonight's extravaganza. <laughs> Does this mean now that Playboy will be publishing nude photos of Mrs. Pat Robertson? Is there a chance that... <laughs> it's, uh, it's a beautiful day uh, here in New York City. It's a lovely autumnal day, isn't it, Paul? I, I wouldn't have put it just that way, but yes, now that you mentioned well, it. Well, now, what's wrong with the way I put it? Well, it's a sort of a, an antiquated uh, expression. Oh, it is, is it? A tumnal? A tumnal. I haven't heard anybody say that since Walter Winchell said it on, <laughs> on his report. Walter Winchell? It's a lovely autumnal day. <laughs> Anyway, I'm walking around, and it's just a, it's a, it's a nice fall day here in New yeah. York City. And uh, I was very excited because I go into this little store out of the way on one of the side streets, and, and, and suddenly I find myself standing right behind the first lady, none other than the first lady of the American theater, Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes. And, I, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, looking, I'm looking for something. I'm thinking, well, should I get an autograph? What should I do? Should I introduce myself? I, I, I was just, I was actually paralyzed. I didn't know how to behave exactly. And, and so I just thought, just be still. Don't make a fool of yourself. Listen to what's going on. And I overheard her say the following. She says to the clerk, excuse me, do you have any of those rubber vomit things? <laughs> No, that's not, uh, no. not true. No, of course not. not. True. Of course it's not true. Not true. Of course. The first lady of First lady American of the American Theater, Theater, Miss Helen Hayes. Do you have any of those rubber vomits? Do you have any of those? But no, she didn't say that. that. Gosh. But you see where the comedy comes in, don't you? That's right. Yeah, because... See, we're, we're going this way, and then out of the blue, it comes here, and then boom! The left there's side. your big explosion of laughter right there. Yeah. <laughs> that is the, that is the cross that's coordinate. That's it, that's the, that's exactly. Cross coordinate of the laugh. That's the tangent right there. They, yeah. boom, you get laughter and big applause, which we'll add in later. Now, you know. There's a, uh, it seems like every two or three months there's a, a, a bunch of new laws here in New York City and, and gosh, I think we need as many laws here as we can get. And uh, this one I think is a good idea from now on. I guess it goes into effect uh, midnight Sunday. Restaurant owners must give lobsters a choice between boiling water or lethal injection. And I think... <laughs> Dear 
Do, do you have any of those rubber vomit things? <laughs> Thank you very much. That's, that, when I go, that's how I want to be remembered. Any of those rubber vomit things. <laughs> Jeez, I feel like I'm going now. Uh, boy, we've put together a great show for you folks here tonight. Uh, a, uh, I think, famous and charming radio personality here in New York City. Howard Stern is with us tonight. And um, a woman who I think is going to be very interesting. This woman worked in the employ of Elvis Presley for quite a while as, uh, as one of his cooks. Her name is Mary Jenkins, and tonight she's going to uh, make for us right here, uh, I believe, Elvis's favorite... Bedtime snack. If I, is that correct, Morty? Okay. Mary Jenkins. And also, with Paul and the band tonight, the Bodines, now say hello to our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer, kids. There he is. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, David, you know something? You said... Uh, Last night you kind of embarrassed me a little bit. You mentioned the one, the one argument we ever had. Yeah, we had a huge really fight. It wasn't that serious, but why don't even, what did you say it was about? Uh, you, I'm, it's my position that the, the Cosby Show is the funniest situation comedy ever. And that was, you know, with all due respect, that wasn't really what the fight was about. It was, what I was think, it about? Well, you seem to think that, you know, Fred Astaire was the best dancer, and I maintain that Gene, Gene Kelly, Kelly. Was, was a better <laughs> dancer, but that's really... Yikes! Yeah, whoa. Yikes! That's all. Hi. Yikes! How are you? Good. You, gonna, you having a big weekend? Yeah, I'm going to Canada this weekend. Oh, are you really? Back to Thunder Bay? <laughs> Some Canadians with us. Hi, it's not, nice a, not a matter of extradition, is it, no, Paul? No, 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 no. <laughs> My legal status is intact. You're, you're a landed immigrant, isn't that it? A I'm grounded a, immigrant? I'm or a, a resident, permanent We're, resident, resident alien, sir. A of resident United, alien. That's, that's of the, the United States. Well, say hello to your uh, parents for me. I'll give them your your back. lovely mother Shirley. That's her. And your handsome father Bernard. Bernard. Yes. The Schaefers. <laughs> I'm very excited, ladies and gentlemen. I I don't want to go into this, but I have brand new contact lenses in my head, and it's like somebody came into my house and and washed my windows. It's <laughs> unbelievable. And, and a guy did this. He came right up to my office and did it, and it took like eight minutes. He comes up, he shines a little thing in each eye, picks out a set, pops them right in, and they're, they're great. So it feels clear? Oh, it's wonderful. They're just, they're a little heavier than the old ones, so I'm having trouble keeping my head up. But... <laughs> Is this thing working? Let's see if that's going to happen. No, it's not working. <laughs> Part of it's working. <laughs> Jeez, it sounded like it was working, didn't it? I could have sworn that was working. Let's try it again. Let's see. Oh no, now it's completely dead. <laughs> Whereas before, before it was working 50%, now it's not working at See, all. Hey, the waters are dead, and yeah. it's too bad, you know, because they, they, they look so great and everything. In, in, rehearsal. in rehearsal. Didn't they, they look were, good in rehearsal? They were fabulous, yeah. and I finally got over my phobia against them, too. I know, you, know? you, were, you had some problems with the phone. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I was afraid of them for a while, but I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see that we're yeah. finally free of... Of the you-know-what. Yeah, that's right. Paul thought, he, he imagined that he saw something in the fountains, and it was nothing, Paul. It was, I don't know, an apparition or, um, I don't know, something I don't know. that... Oh. What the hell was that? It's, oh, my God, what is something that? from the hallway. Something in the hallway. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Well, I think it was uh, it was just it was lights uh, from an airplane reflecting off a uh, cloud cloud formation. Yeah. Well, you know we're near several major metropolitan airports. Yeah. <laughs> Could be anything. Uh, no, they're not working. Uh, That's all right. We'll get a guy in here with a hose later to just turn it on you. Uh, am I the only one who smells toast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody, how many of you all smell toast here? Yeah. This is the uh, this is Mary Jenkins, I guess, preparing Elvis's. Yeah. We, we bring her all the way up from Tennessee to make toast. Is that the? Uh, well, it's whatever, Thursday. whatever Elvis liked, he liked. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's a. Uh, what is going on over there? Oh, Santa's elves are a little noisy tonight, aren't they? Oh, friendly. Uh, it's uh, Friday night, kids, and that means one thing. We answer our uh, viewer mail, and uh, as always, these are actual viewer mail and, uh, on actual blue cards. Look at that. Uh, here we go. Letter number one. Dear Dave, I only, I only wear one sock. You should try it. Help. Patrick Mayer, Denver, Colorado. I don't, I don't want to brag, Patrick, but, but I'm wearing three socks, okay? <laughs> You're, you're all gonna 
get some toast. Settle down. <laughs> Letter number two. Dear Dave, your producer, Morty, that's our new producer, Morty, is certainly cute. Please flash the camera on him more often. Is he the sexiest producer in town or what? Sincerely, Melinda Stewart, Wilmington, Ohio. Now, this is interesting because I don't think people are really aware of what uh, Morty looks like. He's only been on the show a couple of times, but Melinda will certainly be glad to oblige you. Can we get a shot of Morty, Hal? Let's uh, show the yeah, folks. Sure. This is uh, Morty, our new producer. There he is. We're dead here, folks. So the, the entire console back here is dead. We're getting no, no AC. Just thank God this is not an airplane, you know? Uh, letter number three. Dear Dave, since viewer mail moved to Friday, I watch it from a bar and I can't hear the TV. Oh, God, what was that? People kicking stuff over left and right here. We're doing some delicate experimentation back there. And completely sterile environment, so be very careful. Uh, I watch it, uh, I watch viewer mail from a bar and I can't hear the TV. When you get to this letter, could you print my name in real big flashing letters on the screen so I know it's my letter? Happy I can read, Steve Cote, Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, well, sure, Steve, sure, I know, I know, I know how noisy those bars can get, so we, we had this sign made up and if you're watching in the bar tonight, I hope you enjoy it. There it is. Steve Cote, please. There you go. What are we up to? Number four. Thank you very much, Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished voice of our director, Mr. Hal Gertner. Letter number four. Dear Mr. Letterman, I am sorry to inform you that your show has been canceled. Please leave the NBC stationery when you clean out your desk. Sincerely, Kenny Hobbs, Stanton, Kentucky. Wow, did you hear that, Paul? The show's been canceled. We've got to clean out the desk. Hold Come it, on. hold it, hold it. Wait a second. Nope. Wait a second. The letter said we've got to move. You we mean all of this stuff. that Take this is us. how it all ends? We get canceled and you yep. just clean out your desk yep. like some kind of and little letter. wimp? Got you know it. something? Letter comes in. I've been here six years. I don't even have a desk. <laughs> let's face it, we've been treated like dirt. We've been... Dave, if we're going to leave, let's take a piece of this place with us. No. No, what are you... What exactly, what exactly are you saying, Paul? I'm saying let's trash this dump. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I think that's No, you Right. He's not with GE or NBC. It looks like some kind of host. Oh. <laughs> it's, all, it's all a misunderstanding. Oh, gee, I, yeah. I feel terrible. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm always overreacting, too. I know. Too, well, isn't a, I? Oh. It's just a host. Thank God. Thank you. Never mind. All right. Enjoy yourself. I feel well. silly about it. That's good. That's, you know, I'm, I'm glad we weren't, weren't canceled just when we have the fountain working and everything. Uh, letter number five uh, begins, uh, Dear Dave, what scares you? <laughs> Phil Jameson. You know, Phil, I can honestly say that I have never, never been scared of anything in my entire life. But, but I'll tell you, I have noticed one thing. I've noticed that these little mice... These guys right there, they get plenty scared when I poke at them with this pencil. <laughs> oh, gee. Look at that. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Dave. What? Are you, what? Dave, that seems kind of cruel to, 
you really think that's like a, a great thing to be doing? Sure, why not? It, it amuses me to torture them in this manner. <laughs> uh, and besides that, what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh. David Letterman, a man who, because he had never known fear, decided to play God, only to have the tables turn. Irony indeed. But then, such occurrences are common in Biff Henderson's realm of mystery. Biff Henderson's realm of mystery. We'll be back, folks, with Howard Stern.